Hi there, this is Eshu. I'm the abbot here at Zen West Buddhist Society. This Living Zen podcast is just one of the many resources we've created at Zen West to make Zen practice and training more available and accessible to people all over the world. Instructional videos, printable resources, and much, much more are also available on our website at www.zenwest.ca. If you're a regular listener, I'd love to hear from you. So please drop me an email at office at zenwest.ca and let me know who you are, how you got started, and what brought you to Zen. Everything we make available in person and online at Zen West is only possible because of the support of our members and associates, people like you. If the efforts of our community are making a difference in your life, I'd like to invite you to show your support and take part in making it happen by becoming an associate or member of the Zen West Sangha. You can do this by clicking the Join Us tab on our website at www.zenwest.ca. Thank you for your support, and thanks for listening. When the historical Buddha had his great awakening, it's said that he exclaimed, Wonder of wonders, fundamentally we are all already awake. We are all already Buddhas, but we don't realize it. It said that after this great awakening, the Buddha spent the next 45 years of his life expounding this Dharma, inspiring and leading people in practice that culminates in awakening, liberation from suffering. But this fundamental and first exclamation sets a tone for us that each of us has as our nature awakening itself. For the first several years of the Buddha's teaching career, His community, the Sangha, the community of monks, was exclusively male. Only boys. It was an all-boys club. And that was until uh, the Buddha's stepmother, the woman who had raised him his whole life, several other women repeatedly asked to be allowed to come into the community. And the Buddha said, no, 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 no. Many times, no. One day he was confronted by his cousin, Ananda, who said, is there something fundamentally different about the nature of women that you don't let them into the Sangha? Is there something about them where they don't have the same nature of awakening and can't join the Sangha? The Buddha said, no, there's nothing different, no difference in the capacity, in the nature. And just this single interaction was what allowed women to become a part of this community, this Buddhist Sangha, the Sangha of Awakening. People for centuries in every country, and it continues to this day, uh, have always struggled and toiled with this uh, fundamental question of capacity. Does the color of my skin impact my capacity, my potential? On a fundamental level, And it seems that each time this question comes up about our potential, our capacity, when we deeply investigate it, when we go into it, whether we're black or we're white or we're yellow or we're red or we're male or we're female or we're something other than identifying as male or female, whether we like men or whether we like women or whether we like something other than men and women. We ask this question, 
And as human beings, we've chopped it up so many different ways. And we've said, this is good and that is bad. This is better and that is lower. This is pure and that's impure. And to some degree, each of us buys it. But when we take up the time to take up a posture like this one, when we take up the time to investigate through a practice like this one, over and over again, we come to this conclusion that fundamentally, this capacity is one. This capacity is awakening itself boundless, limitless. It's wonderful. But it strikes me that we spend so much time worrying about our potential, wanting to hear somebody say, yes, you have the potential. You have the potential to be whatever job that it is that you want to be. You have the potential to love whoever it is that you want to love. You have the capacity and the potential to be Buddha. And we hear that and we say, oh, good. And that's where our exploration, that's where our effort, that's where our examination ends. It's good enough to know that we have the potential. Just like a seed in a bag that you buy at the store, it has the potential to be a tomato plant. It has the potential to be an oak tree. But if you leave it in the bag, it just stays a seed You have the potential to be the executive of some great company, but you can't just sit there doing nothing and expect to realize that potential. Likewise, it seems to me that there are many people who engage in a spiritual practice with this uh, aspiration or this idea, wonderful, I have the potential to be a Buddha. I have the capacity of the Christ. I am limitless and boundless. And in an absolute sense, this is entirely correct. But like the seed, if we just allow it to sit inert without practice, without intention, without direction. It just stays a seed. Zen practice and Buddhism are not the practice of just remaining a seed. They're the practice of awakening, of realizing this amazing, infinite, limitless, boundless capacity through practice through manifestation. It's not just this single activity of sitting that we do. This is the laboratory where we develop the capacity to investigate, to see what it is that we're doing. As we develop our tools, we take them forward into our life. We can investigate the teachings of these ancient masters, of living teachers, and of our community, making relationship as a person who is more and more awake. We can become a person of awakening, a bodhisattva. And in this way, we create the circumstances, the causes and conditions for the seed, the potential to be realized. We begin to water and sun, explore, develop, and realize. 
This activity that we engage in, even the sitting, don't take it as an inaction. Don't take it as something to do where we can kick back and turn off. This is Zen. Wake up. Our practice here is to wake up and to manifest our true potential, our true capacity to realize our Buddha nature. Thanks for listening to the Living Zen Podcast. If you follow Living Zen through iTunes, I would very much appreciate it if you would take a moment to let me know what you think about it by rating or reviewing the podcast so that new listeners can also hear what you have to say. Thank you for your time and for your support.